I made this mistake on my business trip and this is how my husband got even. So my husband, Tony Washington, male 35, and I, female 33, met at a mutual friend's wedding. Well, more like at my cousin's wedding. He was a friend of my cousin's husband. We were sitting at the same table. He was and still is a very handsome, clean, and sophisticated gentleman. I remember on the day we met, I had worn a very long dress, so it somehow tripped me and I almost fell. Imagine falling in front of all the people that were in that hall. It would have been such a bummer and embarrassing. So Tony luckily caught me beforehand since I was trying to stand when I tripped and he was sitting next to me. His touch gave me goosebumps that I didn't even know I had. Not to mention his soft hands. It felt so right when they touched me. Even his gentle gesture was something else. What I felt for Tony was what I can call love at first sight. He didn't try much or said many words, but his gentleness and handsomeness drew me to him. During that day, we were talking and laughing. It was really nice to be with him. He was in good company. He made me forget about anything else. It felt like nothing was existing except for him and I. I even forgot that we were at my cousin's wedding. I had found a friend and also a lover there. I thought I had found the one my soul needed. He was my true answered prayers. I love a man who knows what they want and makes every effort to get it. Mind you, at that time, I had a plan of starting my own internet cafe and coffee shop. And with Tony's knowledge and skills in IT, I knew I had gained resources to help me start a successful internet cafe. It seemed like it was a blessing in disguise, you know. It felt like with Tony by my side, I would have everything figured out and it would be successful with his intelligence on board. Since then we became friends, he taught me a lot about IT that I didn't know. Well, I wanted to start an internet cafe because we didn't have one in Sicily in big cities, which was far from where I was staying. So I wanted to help my community get easy access to the internet without even having to go to the big city for it. I made it specifically for students so that they can have easy access to the internet and be able to find school projects information in it without having to waste more money to get to the big city to get it. Tony helped me start the internet cafe, which was very sweet and generous of him. I was glad for the service that he had delivered. He started being a computer tutor. Each and every minute that I would spend with him was always priceless. I still melted in his touch and his voice. It had that kind of thing that makes you feel like you have been given some voodoo or he uses voodoo to make my heart palpitate. Months later, Tony declared his love for me. Well, I had already felt something for him and I was falling pretty hard for him, but I couldn't tell him. I was protecting my heart from being rejected and my ego and pride. He told me how much he enjoys spending time with me and thanked the opportunity that I had given of trusting him with my community children and students. Well, Tony was not from Sicily. He had first come for the wedding, which was the first day that we had first met. So Tony and I dated for two years. We were still in the phase of knowing each other very well before we tied the knot. Dot it was the best option, and it gave us time to learn more about each other. I was happy with the fact that Tony was not rushing to any marriage. Yes, we were committed to each other. Well, Tony was residing in Agrigento in the southern coast of Sicily while my home was in Piazza Armarina, which was about one hour and some minutes drive apart. So he would go home for like a week, then come to see me whenever he was free, or I would go to his city when I was not busy. Our love was like a flower. It kept blossoming every minute that we would spend with each other or when we were communicating. Months later, well, we had gotten two years of dating, so we got married on the day of our dating anniversary. You know, it's really nice and fulfilling having to spend the rest of your life with your favorite person who is also your partner. We got to share all our flaws, our dreams, our future and plans. After getting married, we moved to Tefalu, where we wanted to start our own family. We were living the dream and I couldn't be much happier. I mean, why wouldn't you be happy when you have been given a chance to spend the rest of your life with someone who you fell in love with on the first day that you saw him? I fell in love with Tony the day we had first met. Deep down, I knew that he was my soulmate and my caregiver. He didn't have to try hard to make me happy and feel complete. He knew how to make me feel better during my dull days. He always knew how to put a smile on my face. But you know, when I was to be asked why I cheated or dated a stranger from another country while I had the best thing in my life, I don't know how I would answer that question because I have no response for it. As time passed, cafe restaurants expanded. I ended up opening other restaurants in different cities and two outside the country, with Tony's help, of course. That man helped me a lot to the point that he would go as far as missing his business meetings whenever I was going to buy a certain building for the restaurant. You know, when you have something good going on but never get enough of that thing, so you go outside and seek something much better than what you have or getting. It's called greed. I got greedy and allowed my desires to lead me astray. I ended up making bad decisions. 
So one day, Tony started getting too busy to spend time with me. I know we were both busy, but since I was an entrepreneur, I had so much time to spend by myself. Yes, the intimate moments were still fine, but I needed his attention, and I wanted to spend more time with him. I mean, we had stayed far away from each other for almost two years when we were still dating. Ever since we got married, we had spent a couple of times together. We would go out, eat out, or go to play games. My relationship or my marriage with Tony was somehow great because we would always allow ourselves to be young again. Playing games, going out on ice cream dates, attending exhibitions together, we were stress-free and carefree. It was like we were in our very own dimension, living with our rules. Later that day, he respected my request to be back home before dawn and came back home earlier. During dinner, we ate over light conversation, but one would see that there was a huge change between us. The conversations were no longer flowing. It was like we were forcing it. As one of us didn't know how to carry on with the conversation and my heart was so heavy because of his behavior, so I decided to just tell him about the things that he had been doing and how much they were hurting me. But before I told him that, I had reminded him of our third year anniversary, and I had to take a trip to Dubai to check on the restaurant in two days, which took him by surprise. We talked a lot and ironed things out. I had hoped that he would change, you know. I thought he would see his mistakes and rectify them, but instead the man of the house decided to overdo everything that he was doing. Our conversation that we had looked like it had never happened, and everything I had said went from one ear to another ear. I won't lie and say I got used to it because it was sickening and heartbreaking. My conscience would tell me that maybe he was cheating on me, or he had found someone else who was better than me. That was why he was no longer coming home often. Tony was taking the fact that I loved him for granted. He took my love for a ride, and as a good wife that I was, I would understand his behavior. I have understood and tried to come to terms with it and made peace, but it was really hard. It was hard to the point that I would sometimes cry myself to sleep whenever I would think about what was happening in my marriage. Sometimes I would just go to my grandparents' house to cool my head. The tension and everything was too much for me. My sister had suggested that she would move in with me for some time until things got back to normal between my husband and me. Things didn't go the way we had thought. Instead, he came back home regularly, but he would always complain about being tired when I tried to initiate intimacy. Tony was no longer the man that I had fallen in love with, and it was breaking my heart because I loved him, but I was getting bored of always tolerating the old man's childish behavior. I am also a human being. I am a woman. I have a high intimate drive, but he wasn't paying any attention to any of that. Even when I tried by wearing some sexy number to bring back the spark in our relationship, but it wasn't there. He wasn't there. He was always tired or complaining about having a lot of work to do. He forgot that I have desires, which is something that I had told him when we were still dating that I have a high sex drive. And I love being intimate with my partner at least three or four times a week. It's a good thing that I had told him, right? He promised me to always deliver, but he never kept his promise. So one sunny Saturday, Tony had left the house to buy meat. He had asked me to prepare something since his friends were coming over to celebrate his other friend's arrival in Italy. I have heard that he was residing in Los Angeles, LA, but now he had relocated to this side. So I prepared everything and Tony's other friends started coming with their partners because everyone was having a good time up until the man of the day arrived. Mind you, that time I still had to prepare for the business trip. Well, more like it was a trip to check on my restaurant business that was abroad and to meet up with the sponsor. You know, I had told my husband about my trip, but surely that day I saw that he had forgotten about it or he was just avoiding it. During that braai, I asked to speak to my husband on the side when we were in a quiet place, which is our matrimonial bedroom. I reminded him about my trip and guess what he said? He just told me that he still remembers, but he doesn't see the need for me to go while we had guests. He even had the nerve to ask me who would take care of the guests if I were to go on the busy day. I couldn't believe my ears, you know. I was so angry at him, but mostly at myself. I somehow regretted even getting into marriage. So I had rescheduled my meetings and my plane to the following day, but the meetings would take place on the day after. My husband didn't even apologize about his behavior and was insensitive when it came to my business. He preferred me to lose a sponsor then to leave his stupid bri and friends. That person who told me that was not my husband, well, it wasn't the husband that I had thought I knew. I didn't even bother addressing the issue because it was going to cause a lot of noise and chaos. So I decided to deal with it when I came back from my trip. So the next day I went to the United Arab Emirate, Dubai, where I would be meeting the sponsor and where I had opened my restaurant. I really love Dubai for my business because besides the fact that it was a tax-free country, but it has so many business opportunities. 
Some look at it as a good country for vacations and tours, while some, including myself, saw it as a country with great business opportunities. It was beautiful for vacations and tours, yes, but people don't see the kind of opportunities that are in Dubai and UAE as a whole. Anyway, when I got there, I checked on my restaurant and I was impressed with the work my employers were doing and it was quite busy when I got there, which was a bonus for me. The following day, I went to meet with the sponsor. Of course, we were meeting in my restaurant as I was going through some paperwork. You know, when someone says, I feel like I'm looking at Jesus himself. Well, that was what I felt, his body structure, cleanly trimmed mustache, his sexy hazel blue eyes. I was taken aback by the guy. He was really handsome. You know, the kind of handsome Leonardo DiCaprio. That was how he looked. His eyes looked naughty though, and I love being naughty. The guy was not what I had actually expected to be my sponsor. The guy was introduced as Bernard Thurston, male, 33. His appearance was charming and mind-blowing. You know when you see someone for the first time and automatically feel attracted to them. That was how I felt with Bernard. I was not attracted to him because of his handsomeness only, but I would sometimes imagine myself being intimate with him. I imagined myself and him riding and grinding each other. My imaginations went wild to a point that I would see him exploring my whole body, his pinkish, sexy lips kissing every fiber of my body. I know it was wrong of me to drool and think like that for my restaurant sponsor, but I couldn't help it. I mean, the guy was everything and more. I just wanted or craved for only one night with him. Then it would have been enough for me. I am a witch and a loose cannon, I know. But how was I supposed to stop my mind and desire to think about the poor guy? Mind you, that time he was going to be staying with us for some time up until he gets his own place to stay. So imagine the torture and pressure that I would be feeling. I know it's sinister to have these kinds of thoughts for my sponsor, and I was supposed to keep it professional, but I couldn't help it. Only one night with him was going to solve everything. As much as I love my handsome, smart husband, Bernard was the type of guy that you can only have a crush on and date because he was too extreme. His handsomeness, the way he was speaking, would make any woman drop their panties for him. One week later, I was still in Dubai and I was actually staying with Bernard. Well, most of the time I was with him since he had offered to take me on a tour around the UAE. He is a very cool guy, carefree, talkative, and funny. He easily adjusted to the new environment and it was going well for him. I had seen him doing workouts a few times in the morning. His abs were something else. I felt like I would touch them. I had so many dirty thoughts for the poor guy and I really wanted to stop thinking like that with my sponsor, for goodness sake. During that week, I remember that I was in the small kitchenette in the B&B &B that I was staying in preparing breakfast for both me and him. Yes, we had spent the night together, but going through some paperwork together and talking about business. He then came in wearing only a very tight vest and jogging shorts. He just stayed with me in the kitchen, keeping me company. Only if he knew that his company was a destruction to me. He started asking me about my life in general and how I started the restaurant business, wanting to know how being married was. I told him what he needed to hear and found it enough to share. I couldn't tell him everything about my life and my marriage. Yes, he was my sponsor, but not my friend. So I couldn't tell him everything that is going on between my husband and I. It was going to be over boundaries. No. Mind you, Tony and I had been arguing a lot lately about why I left without notifying him and about him being always absent even when I was away. He never called to check up on me and how the business was going. That led to a very heated and biggest argument. My husband and I were slowly drifting apart. Yes, our connection and love would always be there, but we were drifting apart. I felt like he was trying to push me away because even when he is under stress and pressure, he no longer confides in me as his wife. I would sometimes wonder who he confides to if he was shutting me out the way he was doing. It really hurt me having to beg every day for your partner to give you the attention that you need. The more I was spending time with Bernard, the more we got closer. I ended up confiding in him about Tony's behavior and my marital problems because it was really shutting my heart. And it was just evident that I was going through something because I would sometimes zone out when Bernard was speaking to me. I didn't know who to talk to, so Bernard was the only person who was willing to listen to me vent about my marriage. I know I shouldn't have done that, but what I was supposed to do, because I couldn't keep my sadness and heartbreaking moments inside my chest. I was going to burst and a lot would have been destroyed. So Bernard prepared snacks for us, especially marshmallows and hot chocolate, which were my favorite when I was not feeling well or feeling down. I had expanded my time in Dubai. I was still enjoying myself and I didn't want to be around Tony for a little while. I appreciated the time and ear that Bernard had lent me and made me vent in him. I needed to offload. My chest was too heavy. As I was crying like that, Bernard hugged me and promised to always be there for me when I needed a shoulder to cry on. 
since Tony had been so distant and acting the way he was, especially after the argument that we had. He started switching off his phone to a point that he would not be reachable the whole day, maybe until late in the evening. And I knew how much he hated being called late in the evening because he would be in bed sleeping or working. Bernard's hug was actually what I needed. You know the kind of hug that is warm and welcoming? The one that makes you feel like everything is going to be okay. So as we were still hugging, I found myself kissing him. We kissed and things got out of hand. A kiss escalated. We ended up doing the deed in the lounge. Mind you, that time I had no clue that Tony had bugged my phone's camera to track all my movements and to know what I am doing, with who and when. I had completely forgotten that my husband was that insecure, and that was the reason why he didn't want me to fly to Dubai. Since that indescribable day, Bernard and I continued seeing each other. Sometimes we would get intimate all over the B&B, &B, even on the couches, and it was just fire, while some other time we would go to a nearest hotel to book for the day. We couldn't book for the night because my husband was going to be suspicious when I did not answer my phone whenever he called. We did our thing carefully because if Tony was to find out about us, I knew that I was going to suffer the consequences and I would be left a divorced woman. Bernard was giving it to me so sweetly and gently. He was very explosive. He knew how to explore a woman's body and make her feel foreign and end up speaking in tongues. He knew every spot to touch to make me submit to his commands. Well, he loved gentle, rough, intimate moments. I didn't even know that there was actually gentle, rough type of intimate sessions. I learned a lot from Bernard, even some new positions that someone would think are extreme, but they are very enjoyable and nice. I was not a submissive wife to my husband, but with Bernard, I was submissive without even thinking twice. My husband loved missionary intimacy while Bernard loved exploring new positions and I learned a lot. I mean, my own husband was a one or two rounds type of person, then he would get tired and fall asleep. Bernard, on the other hand, was a dragon he was spitting fire when it comes to intimacy. He would make you go all night and even wake you in the morning. He would always leave my private area burning and tired. The guy knew his thing and up until today I complimented him. He is the best. Yep. My relationship with Bernard went on and on for like one month, well until the day I went back home. He made sure to check up on me and promised to visit me. We were still careful, but Bernard didn't want us to be private. He wanted us to be seen in public as dating people and that was not what I had wanted. As much as I was enjoying the intimacy and everything that Bernard was offering, but I loved my husband so much. I wouldn't just leave my husband for an intimacy freak like Bernard. He is doing me good and exploring my body the way I had been desiring, but I wouldn't divorce my husband to be with him. He didn't understand that our relationship was an intimate relationship and business and nothing more or less. But the poor guy had caught feelings and that was not what we had agreed on. It was purely and strictly intimacy. Weeks later, I ended my affair with Bernard. I felt like I had destroyed my marriage and went against my wedding vows. I shouldn't have allowed temptations and desires to control me like that. I should have respected myself and my marriage with Tony. Bernard had started to catch feelings and it was not looking good because we would sometimes argue about his obsessive behavior. I don't know why he was suddenly obsessed because we had an agreement of no strings attached, but he decided to attach strings on our thing and the whole thing got crushed. I went back to my marital home. I wished to change the location and buy a new home for Tony and myself, because the house held so many memories. Even the memory of myself being broken and not taken as the loved wife for the first time was in my marital home. I felt like I had disrespected my husband in the worst way possible, and there was no way to undo what I had done. That's how guilty I was feeling. I know I had wanted or craved for Bernard for at least one night, but it shouldn't have escalated like it did. I should have kept everything professional and strictly business, but no. The stupid me just mixed business with pleasure and guess what happened? I was F asterisk he kicked. A few days later, Tony was back at home while well, he was working at home most of the time. The guilt was eating me up like a deadly disease. I had tried to act normal around my husband, but I couldn't shake the feeling that he knew something was wrong. I couldn't bear looking at him and acting like a happy wife while I knew what I had done. Tony, being as nonchalant as ever, didn't seem to notice anything amiss. The guilt and anxiety of my abomination grew with each passing day. So one day I was just chilling at home, going through some documents and preparing for the month end special menus. Bernard had called and asked for a meeting since he was around the country. Obviously he is or was my sponsor, so I asked him to come over to my house since I was not feeling too well to be seen in public places. Luckily he agreed. I didn't know that the feelings that I had thought I had buried when I ended things with Bernard would somehow be out there, you know. 
The real reason why I had ended things with Bernard was because I was also catching some feelings for him, and it was becoming dangerous. During that beautiful sunny morning, I had woken up craving for some intimacy and I needed my husband. So I asked Bernard to come over to my house. I mean, I was alone, so I thought, why not invite Bernard over? When Bernard got inside, I couldn't contain myself, so I just told Bernard that we should just get to business. He started by exploring my body so nicely and smooth as usual. Bernard's touch was always like a drug to me, and I was enjoying it so bad. Things got out of hand. Our quick, intimate moment went to be the longest and sweet one. It wasn't my intention to do what I did, especially at my marital home, but I was in my desired moment, and I was too lazy to be out of the house. So that's why I had called Bernard over. I thought it was going to be one quick round to get my satisfaction, but it ended up being the whole service. As we were still busy, and I was about to reach my Cloud9 climax, I heard people speaking. I first didn't pay attention to it because the TV was also playing, so I had thought it was TV only to find out that it was Tony with his friend from work. He looked so spooked and somehow heartbroken or rather traumatized for what he had come across. As much as I was not feeling any guilt when my thing with Bernard kept happening, but when I saw Tony's face, I felt ping of guilt and regret. I regretted everything that I had done. It was like I had recently regained my consciousness. At first, I had wished to be told that dreaming or what was happening wasn't true. But it was, and from there, and then I knew that I had destroyed my marriage. I don't really know why I had invited Bernard over to my marital home with my husband, but desires drove me to that decision and it cost me a lot. I tried hiding my body from Tony's friend, but it was too late. He had already seen everything and there was nothing I could have done except for taking the throw that was on the couch and covering myself. Tony became a statue, so at some moments I think he was trying to digest what he had seen. After some time, I asked Bernard if he should go along with Tony's friend. I was glad when they complied with my request and went out. I was left with Tony, mind you, that time I didn't know what to say nor do. My mind went blank and my tongue got dry. I wanted to tell him that it wasn't what he was thinking, but that would be useless because he had caught me red-handed. On another side, I wanted to apologize and tell him that it will never happen again. But what would I be apologizing for? I didn't know that if I was to apologize to Tony, I would be apologize at the fact that I got caught, or I would be apologizing at the fact that I had went against my own wedding vows of being loyal and faithful, and went outside to destroy that one thing that we had going on, and we had worked so hard to make it where it was. Yes, Tony was the main reason why I had gone outside our marriage to find satisfaction outside, but that didn't mean I should have listened to my desires and jeopardized my marriage right. One month later, things were still not fine between Tony and I, but we continued living together. We didn't even talk about what had taken place. When I tried to apologize or even try to explain to him what had really happened, he would dismiss me and go out to only God knew where. I was regretting ever getting it up with Bernard again because I had closed the Bernard chapter when I started to learn how to focus on my marriage, but on my mini vacation, the guy just showed up and all the desires that I had came back. All I wanted was for Tony to pay attention to me and take me or treat me as his wife, not his roommate. I needed him next to me. I wanted to feel his touch, his kisses and intimate moments. I wanted him to notice me just like the old time when we started dating and even before we got married. I missed him. I missed the spark that we had before we got married and during our first years of being married. I wanted my best friend back, but he wasn't there and Bernard was there to step in where Tony couldn't provide. During that month, he came back home and told me that he had moved on and I should find a place to stay because his new person was going to move in with him, so one had to go. I asked who was the person he wanted to bring into our marital home, and he told me that he would introduce me to her later, that day. All I had to do was to cook a nice dinner because she was a special guest. That time I kept thinking about who he would bring into our home and why would he tell me such a thing. My mind was telling that he was doing that to spite me or make me jealous. Sure. I had done him wrong in the worst way possible, but how could he want to introduce his new girlfriend to me while I was still his lawful wife? My heart was torn apart. I found myself going into a very depressing state that I had never thought I would survive. He should have just filed for divorce if he didn't love me anymore instead of hurting me the way he was. I was not sure if I was ready to see his newly found love or a bait to spite me. Later that day, he came back and I got the best shock of my life. He came in with my worst enemy. Imagine my lower grade bully was actually the girl that Tony introduced to me as his new lover. I couldn't believe it, you know. I looked at Patricia with so much hate and rage. I mean, I hadn't forgiven nor forgotten the things that she had done to me while we were in senior primary school. I couldn't believe Tony, you know, and to worsen things. 
He forwarded me all the videos from the very beginning of my affair with Bernard in front of his girl, then told me to check my socials in an hour. Snap. Tony introduced her and looked like they were genuinely in love with each other. I couldn't believe that my own husband would actually betray me like that with my enemy's worst part. I didn't know what to say. To say my heart was shuddered would be an understatement. How can a person who claimed to love do something so sinister to you? I couldn't fathom seeing them all touchy-feely in front of me, so I had left them alone in the dining room. Tony came into our bedroom and asked if I felt how sweet the revenge was, and that he wasn't done because that was a start. I couldn't believe the psycho that I had married. I thought he was sane, but no, he was insane. So he used my worst enemy to spite and avenge himself just because he had caught in an act with Bernard. Tony was just pure evil and disgusting. After that hour, he had told me to check my socials, and I checked why he wanted me to be on socials in the evening. When I logged in, all my actions with Bernard were posted there. People even created memes with our videos. It was so embarrassing and degrading. I went back to my grandparents' house and to say they were disappointed at what I did and how I had destroyed my marriage would be an understatement. But another thing, they got very angry when they learned that my husband had gone out to take my worst enemy to avenge himself, the very same person who I almost lost my life to because of her. Tony had the nerve to take her and introduce her to me. You know that time I lost a lot, including my investors and sponsors, because even now I'm trying to get other investors, but I'm failing because of those videos. I don't know what to do nor say. Please help me understand what was going on in my marriage. Yes, till today we have not got divorced, but we no longer live together. Another thing I want to do is to save my businesses because slowly they are drowning and going down the drain. What should I do? How do I deal with all of it? I am suffering. I know I am the one who started all this, but I never thought I would find myself in this situation. Please advise me because I am lost in the wild and I need to get out. My life has been a roller coaster ever since I came to this world. I would have some good years and bad years. I met someone and that person turned out to be my husband after years of dating. He was a very dominant boss, that is what I loved about him. He was very superior and made me submit to every decision he made. He was a real man. Every woman in our neighborhood wished their husband was like mine. He was a role model to some men. Everything was perfect until he started paying more attention to his work, and I started feeling like I wasn't enough and also I was getting bored. I missed his compliments and the way he looked at me and touched me. Sometimes I'd be left alone in his huge house and he'd be gone for a week on a business trip. I even thought maybe he was cheating on me. I was needy, but you can't blame me. He made me like this with all the love he gave me and how he treated me and all of a sudden he just got busy and paid little attention to me. I'm sure someone can relate to what I'm talking about. So let me tell you what exactly happened before my life made a very huge turn during a happy moment. I, female 29, met Matt Harrison, male 34, my husband in a bookshop where I was previously working before I became a fashion designer. He was there to sign autographs for his book, which was the bestseller at the time. I was shocked when he approached me because I didn't think a man of his standard would want to be with someone like me. A few weeks later, well after he had approached and we exchanged numbers, he came and picked me up after work for a little date just to get to know each other, you know. And I found him very interesting and funny. He was born and raised in Texas. One thing I knew and had noticed about my husband since we had known each other was that he really loved his father and he was his inspiration. Because he once told me that his father owned a junkyard and taught him how to be a responsible man. What inspired him the most about his dad was that he gave him everything he wanted and also his junkyard was very profitable. The book he wrote was about his father and how he motivated him to be the man he is today. He was more than just a man. He is very successful, but he doesn't show unless you know a lot about him. I love the fact that he was not arrogant because of his riches. He was just a low-key successful person. He moved his family to Los Angeles. His father wanted to move in an area with an ocean view. Imagine the privilege. We shared a lot about ourselves and our goals. I considered him my best friend because he was a good listener, you know. He knew how to make time for me. Well, until he didn't. We shared a lot in common. He was very business-minded and enthusiastic about what he does. He became my pillar. He would even take me to different places that I didn't even know of, introducing me to different people who were fashion designers. As much as I had the love of becoming a fashion designer one day, I mean, I had the skill and talent in designing clothes and bags, but my wish was to first go to fashion designer school so I would get more knowledge about it and a qualification. The more we spent time together, the more I fell for him. Was I rushing things? But I mean, you can never say no to what the heart wants and needs right. One thing about me was that I couldn't confess my feelings, and I was not about to embarrass myself like that to a man like him. 
not knowing that the feeling was mutual, actually. Can you imagine that? There was this day where he took me to this very classy and nice restaurant. We were actually going for our first actual date, and it was epic. And crazy enough, it was also my birthday. Yes, I had told him when my birthday was because he had asked me, but I never thought he would actually do something so good for me. I mean, a lot of people usually forgot my birthday except for my mother, of course, but no one had ever done anything for me or even bought me a gift. I fell in love with him each second we would spend with each other. I have already mentioned that he knew about my dreams of becoming a fashion designer, so he advised me to quit my job and start following my dream, and he was going to pay for my college fees. I didn't want that because I wanted to pay my own fees, but he insisted. I was a bit skeptical at first, but eventually agreed to his offer. I mean, I had nothing to lose right. Months later, our friendship elevated to being girlfriend and boyfriend. I was truly happy. I had the man I fell in love with at the bookstore. He didn't become my friend only but my pillar and motivator. So what more would I have asked for? After some months of us dating, he asked me to move in with him because the apartment I was staying in was a bit far from him and the college that I was going to attend. I was not sure about his offer. I mean, he had done a lot for me already and I was scared that he would somehow become controlling if I agreed. So I asked for some time to think about it. I was skeptical because I didn't know the outcomes of moving in with him. After two full weeks of thinking, I eventually gave in and moved in with him in his apartment. I mean, I had nothing to lose right, and it was for my own good and safety, so it was very thoughtful and sweet of him. Our relationship was a bliss. He wanted nothing about me, and he was somehow insecure, so he made sure to take me to and from college. I really don't know where he got that time, but I appreciated it a lot. I fell much deeper in love with him, you know? A year passed, everything was still a bliss, and we were very inseparable. I passed my first year very well, thanks to my man for being the best. My dream was slowly but surely becoming a reality, and I couldn't be happier. My fashion design career had started booming. My husband had introduced me to some of his associates, and that was a great start for me. His associates then marketed my designs, which gained me a lot of clients, including some celebrities. My husband was the main reason I was that person I was. My fashion was outstanding. I even dressed some celebrities. It was bliss. After five years of dating, he finally popped the big question, would you marry me? I was so emotional and couldn't believe that I would be spending my whole life with the man I love. Obviously, I agreed to marry this man. I mean, he was the man of my dreams. I do not regret walking down that aisle. I was the happiest woman at that time. How I wished my mother was still alive so she would see her daughter finally tying the knot with her best friend. A week after our marriage, we moved to an estate in Las Vegas. He once told me that ever since he was a child, he had always wanted to own a casino. So during his book tour, he met someone who owned a casino and was very fascinated by his book. You see the power of making connections, it really helps sometimes. They became friends and he was invited to be a guest in his casino. He ended up telling him about his love of casinos and they made a deal. I sat in a shop in the mall and I hired young designers to work for me. If I wasn't at the shop, I was at home drawing or sleeping. It was sometimes boring because I had no friends. The only friend I had was my husband. That was when everything went in a different direction. He was always busy, since his casino plan became a success. I loved his determination and enthusiasm, but I also needed his time, you know. Well, time passed and he got pretty busy to a point that I would only see him, twice or three times a week, mind you, that it was during winter holidays. He didn't even come back home during the week of Christmas and New Year because it would get pretty hectic. I tried to complain about it because ever since he got the casino deal, he even forgot about my birthday, and it was really unusual and alarming. So when I complained about it, he told me that he was working for our future and our children's future. That was just a lame excuse to justify his absence and behavior. Or was I reading too much on everything? When I saw that my husband was no longer spending a lot of time with me, I started getting bored to the core. I then started going out, going on solo dates, or visiting the clubs in Vegas. I was trying to pass time, you know. I couldn't stay cooped up in the house for the longest time because I didn't even know when my husband would have time for me again. I missed him so much, you know. Even our intimate moments were no longer the same. I mean, he would come back home tired, so I would sometimes wear lingerie to spice up things and bring some action spark into our life again. But I would be wasting my time and effort because he would come back very tired and he would just take a bath eat and just doze off. What infuriated me the most was when he would just doze off during a serious conversation and always get tired after one round of our intimate moment. It was really a turnoff for me because I wouldn't reach my climax and he would leave me hanging and fall asleep. It was no longer fun in our marriage and I hated that. Time passed. I was starting to enjoy my solo dates. 
going to check on my work, then visit clubs. It was somehow therapeutic for me and it made me kind of forget about my miserable marriage. I mean, we didn't even have children for Christ's sake, so what my husband was doing made me think that even if we were to have children, that means those children would also suffer to get his attention. I was somehow glad that we didn't have any children or the talk of having any children because they were gonna suffer like I was. One day as I was going to my solo dates, I bumped into my ex-boyfriend, Keenan Bryanston, male, 30 years old. Keenan was actually my high school sweetheart. We grew apart when we went for different directions of life. I had actually thought that Keenan was the love of my life, you know. But the distance and life issues grew us apart. You know when the proverb says, where their water stopped, they will stop again. I lived with that proverb for a long time. I think four or five years, but he was never coming back up until I eventually allowed myself to move on. I tried having relationships, but they were all not what I had expected and what I had wanted and needed in my life. I mean, two of my eyes were emotionally abusive. They would make me feel small and stupid until I decided to call it quits after being patient for a very long time. My mother would tell me that if I didn't get out of those relationships whilst I still can, I would get out of it with a coffin. I ended the last abusive relationship when I was in between life and death. I woke up in a coma that time and the state I saw my mother in made me realize that being patient again would eventually murder my mother. So I ended everything and even applied for a restraining order against him. Since then, I have only focused on my life and my mother. I was not even thinking about any relationships. I hated the word relationship because it would take me back to those times where I was voiceless and controlled. Another thing on some of my ex-boyfriends, I would look for Keenan in them. I wanted to forget Keenan using them and they saw that then ended the relationship. But Matt came and changed all that. He made me believe in love again and with my mother's advice, I gave love another chance. I just couldn't believe it when I bumped into Keenan. My heart started pumping abnormally and strangely. My other side was happy that I had bumped into him while another one was just fuming. I was angry at him for leaving me and never thought of coming back. I even thought about the things that I went through in relationships, looking for him in every man that I was meeting or dating, and right when I was in a better place and able to move on. He decided to just show up in the same restaurant that I was in. My mind was running. I was thinking that maybe he was stalking me or he had been stalking me. Kenan greeted me and asked to speak to me privately. He started telling me how much he had been missing me and all those lies that usually tells to make you feel better. But I was not easily convinced by his lies, so I left him there and went back home. When I got home, I was mixed with emotion. I just didn't know how to contain myself. Matt came back earlier that day and asked why I was crying and looked heartbroken. I lied to him, of course. I told him that my abusive stepdad had come back and I had seen him in one of the grocery stores in town. I knew that what I was saying was utter lies. Yes, I had an abusive stepdad, but he is in prison facing his triple life sentence. Three weeks later, I received Keenan's friend request on Facebook. I don't know what made me accept it, but I did, and I didn't regret it. I wanted to know where he was and why he never came back for me. I wanted to shout at him and maybe give him a few punches and slaps. In an instant that I had accepted his request, he sent me an inbox text. Obviously, I replied to him because I was yearning to know the reasons why he never came back. My heart still loved him a lot. Yes, I had moved on and even got married to Matt, but Keenan was like a drug that I was addicted to, and no one would know or understand the kind of affection it had on me. Keenan and I started talking and even planned to meet up so that we would iron out our differences and approach the elephant in the room. You know, Keenan's reappearance made me confused because I knew that I loved Matt, and I was married to him, but I loved Keenan also. I mean, Keenan and I didn't really break up, but the distance grew us apart. I was sure that he had moved on also because I noticed a ring on his finger. And to tell the truth, I was hurt a lot. My heart broke at the glance that I made and saw a ring on his finger. A week later, Keenan and I grew closer again. Yes, we were both married and we respected our partners, but you know when two hearts yearn for each other, they always find a way to each other again. Mind you, that time Keenan even had a child with his wife. Oh wait, no correction, he had children, three of them, and he loved them so much. I didn't have a problem with his children, you know. They were such angels with sweet little souls. But my problem started when their mother, Keenan's wife, started accusing me of being her husband's mistress. That time I had not gotten back with Keenan. We were just communicating in a civil way. Yes, he would tell me that I had fallen out of love with his wife, but he didn't know what to do about it. There was a lot that he had told me about his marriage. He even confessed that he had never stopped loving me and that he even tried to connect with me using letters and paging, but it seemed like I had never received any of those. 
Truthfully, I had seen a couple of numbers trying to page my home number, but I had ignored them. And sometimes my mother would not be around to use her paging speaker, but I had never received any letters because after like a year or two, my mother moved from Stapleton Island and went to live in Oklahoma. So as time went by and I sold my shop to the highest bidder, I knew it was a stupid move, but I have had enough. I was starting to enjoy being at home all alone. Since my husband was lacking in giving me attention and his time, I had to get used to being alone most of the time. People were starting to annoy me and I felt uncomfortable in Las Vegas since my husband was somehow a popular man. I felt like I was being watched every time I stepped out. Yes, people knew that I was his wife and it was good at first, but I eventually got tired of being in the spotlight because of my designs and the person I had married. But it's really hard being known as the wife of the businessman, but that husband never has time for his wife, only his business and friends. I somehow felt like I was slowly becoming a furnisher in the house because I was always at the house if I was not out. His name was everywhere. I was proud of him for everything he had achieved and was in his mind. I mean, he was living his dreams and they all came true, but I still missed him. I felt like I was just a trophy wife, someone who was just there to go to gala dinners with and come back home. I actually wanted to keep Keenan out of my heart and tried to convince myself that I loved Matt. Matt was just a hardworking man and we only had time for intimacy once a week. Can you imagine the starvation I had? It was pretty hectic. Yeah. Other women on social media thought I was just living the life but not knowing how lonely I was. Imagine being someone you only see twice on weekdays. He comes home when you're asleep and lives early in the morning. When he is at home, he is in his office and he doesn't want to be bothered unless you would be bringing him something to eat or snack on. I didn't know what to do anymore because he was not even paying any attention to my concerns. As much as I needed his time and attention, I was really concerned about his health. He was too attached to his work to a point that he would just lock himself in his study or small office room the whole day. I was really worried about him and the connection that we had was slowly fading. I had been patient for way too long. I mean, even the heart that loves also gets tired, right? And love alone was not enough if there was no connection and affection. We were more life room or housemates because we were staying in the same house, sleeping on the same bed, but the connection was no longer there. I had known there and then that I had really lost my husband, not to any lady or whatever, but I lost him to his work. Time passed. He started going on his business trips for months, leaving me in the house. What did he think I was getting attention from? So I went out more often. Well, more like going to clubs more often. The way I was so stressed, I almost got myself drinking anxiety pills because of the way my husband was acting. It was stressing me out. Time passed and I saw that going alone to release the stress that I had at home was somehow boring. So I asked Kenan to tag along just to avoid being bored. When Kenan and I got to the nearest club, it was epic. The music was busting on top of the roof, people were dancing, and I felt at home when I entered the club's door. It felt like it was where my heart belonged. My happiness got to be in play. We bought our own drinks while enjoying the music. You know, Keenan was a handsome, slim fit guy with a nice cut mustache. He was looking way too different than the time he left. I told Keenan that I didn't want any vodka shots because I still had to drive back home, but he didn't listen to me. Instead, he bought more booze and a lot of shots telling me about YOLO you only live once, and the conversation was flowing. It was really fun hanging with him. We laughed, danced, and even made jokes about each other's moves. It was what my soul needed. I felt at peace with so much happiness. Since that day, I continued going out, partying, and clubbing with Keenan. What I liked more about Keenan was that he was not afraid to live for himself. Yes, we were both going through our SH asterisk asterisk tie marriages, but we left that outside the club and came to enjoy our lives. Keenan was also working as an architect, but he allowed himself to let loose a little. He was not afraid to be wild and be himself without any fear of being judged. Trevor and I were stealing glances at each other. I saw that we had a lot in common. During the times of going out, Trevor would sometimes ask me to be his date at parties, as friends, of course. That time I was still friend zoning him even though my heart yearned for his touch. As much as that was wrong in so many ways, but I felt a sense of belonging, you know. I felt at home, I mean he allowed me to be wild and carefree while he also does the same. It was like we were a couple that had an open relationship and it felt great. I wanted that with Matt, but he didn't pay attention to my needs and desires. A month passed, Keenan and I went to this music event, and there was DJ Black Coffee, South Africa's best deep house DJ, along with other DJs and artists. It was truly a blast and I was having so much fun. I loved the DJ very much and it made me happy to get a chance to be at one of his events that took place in Madison Square Gardens. 
My husband, or must I say my ex-husband, never really cared about what I liked and what I didn't. All he cared about was showering me with those materialistic things that I didn't even like, but I would show happiness because I love him, you know. After DJ Black Coffee's event, we went to another nightclub not far from my house, or must I say Charlize's house. We got there and the music was booming, people minding their own business, having fun in every way. I was also having so much fun with Keenan, but what I didn't appreciate about him was that he kept confessing his feelings for me. I knew I was feeling the same, but I was trying by all means to mask that. I knew that I was married and committed to Matt, which was why I didn't consider Keenan's feelings towards me. I knew where my heart belonged, so when I told him to remember that I was someone's wife, he told me that he had noticed, but he couldn't live with the fact that he had feelings for me. Unexpectedly, I regretted myself and felt guilty after I kissed Keenan. Yes, I was intoxicated a lot to a point that I found myself craving for Keenan's sexy and pinkish lips. I couldn't contain myself any longer. I know I shouldn't have done that since I am or was a married woman. And what I did was breaking the vows that I had made in front of the Lord, both our families and friends. I knew that if Matt was to find out about what I had done, things would take a huge turn for me and my marriage would either be in jeopardy or get destroyed completely. What shocked me later on that evening was when Keenan told me that he was going through a divorce and his wife, or ex-wife rather, was threatening to take his children with her. I knew how much Keenan loved his children and how much they meant to him, so the issue was eating him up. Sure, he was no longer in love with his ex-wife and he would have happily signed the divorce papers right after receiving them, but the fact that she wanted to fight her battles using his children somehow triggered a soft spot, sadness mixed with anger that he had tried to put a brave face on. I knew that that was a very sensitive issue to him, and I had to be there for him. That time I spent the night with Keenan, we kissed and foreplayed but never got into the intimacy part, even though I was yearning for it. But I couldn't or we couldn't go that far, because he was trying to win me back. He had already won my heart because it had never stopped loving and beating for him, but I had to think that I was married. So the next day I told him that whatever happened to us must remain where we were because I loved my husband. I was fooling myself and I wanted to keep our relationship civil. The guilt was eating me up, to tell me that I found myself trying by all means to cover the shenanigan that I had done and focus on my marriage and my husband. Despite the feeling of unhappiness and loneliness, I knew that I had to put up a brave face and mask the whole thing, including the feelings that I had for Keenan. Frustrated and unhappy with what I had done, I decided to talk to Charlize about my desires, just to see his point of view. That day I had cooked a very nice dinner, his favorites only so we could talk about my issue. I explained how I felt trapped and that I needed some freedom to explore my sexuality since he has always focused on work and showering me with materialistic things, but never asked how I was, nor check if I am happy. I even emphasized that this wasn't about wanting to replace him, but rather about personal growth. I knew that I was lying, but I had to ask him in another way so that he wouldn't see that I had done something. I tried to reason with him, but he refused to budge. He believed that opening our relationship would lead to jealousy and heartbreak. And so, I made the difficult decision to put myself first. I knew that Matt loved me and I loved him also. But love alone is not enough if you are not happy, right? You know, I hoped he would understand since he sees that I am always in the house doing nothing. It had become like I was a part of the house furniture. Another thing my heart longed for Keenan, my ex-high school lover that I had recently rekindled with. Matt, however, didn't take it well. He felt hurt and betrayed by my request, but Matt was adamant that he didn't want to share me with anyone else. I explained my feelings, emphasizing that I still loved him deeply, but needed more space to grow as an individual. Matt, however, was taken aback by my proposal. I knew that he had never considered the possibility of an open relationship. To him, our relationship was built on trust and exclusivity. So my request caught him off guard and infuriated him to a point that he even asked if I was cheating on him and if I had gotten someone else from the clubs that I was going to, and the trips that I had taken with some guy and kissing him. His question caught me off guard. I mean, how did he find out about all that? I was shocked and somehow scared about what he would do next, but I decided to deny all his allegations and told him to stop changing the topic. No. We ended up avoiding that topic, so I had moved from the dining room to the lounge so that I would get some privacy since I was chatting with Keenan on the phone. He was telling me that he had won a case that his ex-wife had filed for, and they were given 50% share in the children's custody. As much as Keenan was still facing and fighting the children's battles, he never forgot to tell me or remind me rather that he missed me and that his love for me had never vanished. 
As I was about to reply to that text, Matt came out of nowhere and snatched my phone. I tried fighting him, but you know how strong men are, so he pushed me down by force to the point that I collided with the glass coffee table and hurt my back. He told me that he wanted to see who I was chatting with and made me smile like a retard or a young girl given candy. Yes, Keenan knew how to choose words when speaking to me, and he knew which words to say and which buttons to press to make me feel some type of way. That moment, I didn't even want to see Matt's face. I knew that he had seen everything that had happened between Keenan and I, and it was just a matter of time before the bomb exploded. The following day, Matt went to work early and came back at night. He asked about the guy that I had been seen spending time with while he was not present. I denied everything that he was saying, and it led to a massive argument. So after a particularly heated argument, Matt made a decision that would change our lives forever. I couldn't believe it, you know. I thought he loved me. He packed my belongings and asked me to leave our matrimonial home. Just because he saw my conversations with Keenan, he even came to the conclusion that I had wanted to open our relationship on purpose because I knew that I was cheating on him. I tried reasoning with him, but instead of understanding things in my own perspectives, he made a harsh and hurtful decision. I was so devastated. I had never imagined that my desire for exploration and my conversations with Keenan would lead to such a painful outcome. Yes, our conversations were not innocent or whatsoever, but he should have checked himself first and tried to find the reason why I was having those conversations and trips with Keenan. But as usual, the woman had to always be a villain. Our disagreement quickly escalated into a heated argument. Emotions ran high and hurtful words were exchanged. Matt made a decision that shocked both of us. I didn't think he would actually come up with that decision just because I wanted our marriage to be open, but still my soul was with Keenan. He asked me to leave our shared home and told me that he was unable to continue our relationship under these circumstances. He told me right in my face that I should expect a call from our lawyer anytime soon, but he wanted me gone and continued with my ex because it was like a love lost and love found kind of thing. Matt took 50% of everything that I had owned, including the monies that I had on my bank account since we were married under community property. 50% was a very huge amount. The way I was so depressed, I ended up cutting things off with Keenan up until I had healed and was able to move on. So one day, as I was driving to my mother's house to tell her what had happened, my mother was like my sister and the first best friend. I knew that she was going to judge me and maybe get angry at me, but she had to know. While I was driving while on the call, I got into an accident where a truck came out of nowhere and collided with my car. I don't know how I survived that accident, but I am grateful to God that I did. Later on, I received a call from Matt asking how I had survived and how much of a cat with nine lives I was. He then told me that the way that truck hit my car was the same way that I had hit his heart and broke it into small pieces. I knew that I had done him wrong, but that was just so evil of him. I thought he loved me and would never hurt me. The scars that were in my body were nothing compared to the ones at the heart. With time, I healed and learned from my mistakes. I understood that sometimes the desire for personal growth can clash with the commitment we have to our loved ones. I vowed to communicate better in the future, to cherish the relationships that truly mattered, and to find happiness within myself. Keenan and I were still friends. I was just no longer ready for any relationship, so I was glad that he understood my issues. Keenan had been very helpful, caring and supportive throughout the whole healing process. I still love Keenan, but I don't know if it would be the right thing to form a relationship with him while I had just gotten out of the messy divorce and still trying to heal. I really want to move on, but I want to know if it is the right time to do so. Any advice is welcome.